Hello and welcome to the Corsair H100. Right now I'm unboxing it so we've got to get rid of all this plastic. But this is a CPU cooler and not just any CPU cooler, it's a liquid CPU cooler. What it is, it's self-contained so you don't have to build it up and let's get inside. So inside you'll find this lovely instruction manual, gives you instructions for both Intel socket 2011 and 1155 and 1156 as well as the AMD sockets. Stop! Don't return this item to the store, contact Corsair instead. They clearly have no faith in retailers. And more adverts on what other products they sell. In here we have the backplate for Intel boards. Uh, down here we have 10,000 screws. Let's put this thing all together. That includes the ones for AMD and Intel. We have a cheap fan and another cheap fan. There's also a giant packet of silica gel down there. And in this plastic we have the actual CPU cooler. Why it's wrapped in so much plastic I don't know, I guess it's in case it leaks, but thankfully this one hasn't. So removing all this plastic, and we have the radiator and the CPU block, all self-contained, it's one unit. You don't have to fiddle with anything when you're setting it up. And it even comes with its own heat paste, which is handy. First thing I notice, it has a button on the front, but we'll get to that in a bit, as well as all these ports on the side. So, fitting it, we take the Intel backplate, because I'm fitting it to my Intel 1155 board, my new Ivy Bridge. So you've got to flip the motherboard over onto my lovely anti-static mat before you make any comments. It's completely anti-static, it's completely rubber. And when you've got all the pins in place, you can put it on the board. And when you've got that, you make sure you've got the right screws, as there are a set for 2011 and a set for 1155 and 1156. You get them all in place just like that. Now this bit was a lot trickier than I thought it would be. We've got all four screws in place and we have these connectors for the CPU block which we'll get to in a bit. And what we need to do, we need to put this on the processor. And it's a lot more difficult than it sounds. You've got to get it even with all the screws on the four corners and touching the CPU. Once you've finally got it in place, you need to just smear it around a little bit, make sure the heat paste is all spread out over the CPU. There's a very specific way to put these nuts on. So this is what they look like, and you've got to put them in in exactly the right order. Now the instruction manual will tell you how to do it, but you start in the top left, then you move to the bottom right, then you move over to the bottom left, to the top right. And it takes a little while just to get them all in place, so you don't screw them in entirely, you put them on slowly. You don't want to break your motherboard, you don't want to break the CPU block, and you want to make sure it is perfectly even, so you get a good contact patch between the CPU block and the CPU. And once you're finished, nice and tight, but not too tight, you need to fit your motherboard into your case. Described in my previous video. I'll put a link to that in the description. But once it's fitted, you need to make sure the radiator is in place. Now this is tricky, putting the motherboard in and holding the radiator at the same time. You might need two people for this. But my case has a perfect 120mm radiator grill, which I'll show you in a minute. What I'm doing here, I'm taking each individual screw and I'm putting a very small washer on it so I can fit it to my case. Once you're done with that, you end up with something looking like this. So we have the radiator fitted to the top of my case. This takes up two 120mm fan slots and it almost seems perfect for the job. It's a great standard they've come up with fitting these radiators. And I wanted to use my F12 fans but as you can see because it uses this nice suspension system to keep it quiet, they won't work. You need to use a fan like this, so you can feed the screw from one side to the other. And these fans that came with it, they're not great. They're quite noisy and they don't really move a lot of air. So I did replace them and I'll get to that in a minute. But to fit the fans, it's very simple. You just put your screw all the way through the fan and into the radiator. There's nice screw holes all set up and you end up looking like this. Now I should note, there's a small wire you can see coming out of the CPU block and that connects to the motherboard CPU header. No power runs down that, just a monitoring. The power comes from a 4-pin Molex. But it's all controlled inside this thing. Which is why you have to take the fan leads from the radiator and plug them in to the CPU block. Now this isn't easy with the giant blue heatsink next to it, but it's fine. Now in this shot, I've replaced the fans and I'll show you what they are in a minute and once you turn it on this button on the CPU block controls how much water is flowing and how fast the fans are spinning. So it can be a little bit of hassle you can see now 
So we've got this little light showing minimal, then we've got average, which is what it starts up on, and you can turn it up to high performance if you're going to overclock it, which I am. Now the fans I've replaced them with, you can see now, they're a little bit more grey than the other fans, and I've not really got the cabling in the right place, but it's quite tricky to replace them. And these are Servo Gentle Typhoon fans, and they are a brilliant. They're so quiet. Look at this. How good is this cooler? I'm at 4.1 gigahertz, and it's 44 degrees. Now it net fluctuates a little bit between 40 and 50, but not much else. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.